According to longtime Sacramento Kings reporter James Hamm, the Kings are not issuing Dante DiVincenzo a qualifying offer, meaning he will be a unrestricted free agent this offseason and can go wherever he likes. What in the world are the Sacramento Kings doing? Help me make this make sense. Let's try and figure it out on today's episode of the Locked on Kings podcast. You are Locked on Kings, your daily Sacramento Kings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is that time. Time for another episode of Locked On King. Hello and welcome to Locked On Kings, your podcast hub for Sacramento Kings coverage all regular season and all off season. Today's episode is brought to you by Arcade One Up. We are partnering with Arcade One Up to give away three free NBA Jam Shack machines. That's right, three of them. These are guys known for making incredible retro three quarter scale at home arcade games like Pac Man, Golden Tee, and many more. You can enter to win right now on arcadeoneup.com slash locked on. That's arcadeoneup.com slash locked on for your chance to win an NBA Jam Shack machine. Hello, my name is Matt George. I have the privilege of being your host here. I'm a sports reporter and producer at ABC 10 in Sacramento. I just got back to the ABC 10 studios where I'm recording this right now. I just got back from Sacramento Kings practice. It was their second practice, their second summer league team practice, the first one that media were able to go to. I'm going to share with you my thoughts and my takeaways. We got to watch the entire practice. I'll share with you uh, what I noticed and and things that stood out to me, my takeaways from that practice uh, segment, but that's going to be towards the end of the podcast because we have stuff to talk about. I've already recorded a Locked on Kings episode today. I recorded an episode with Brendan Nunez from the Kings Pulse and, and the Kings Beat podcast. He and I discussed a lot Uh, about uh, this uh, upcoming or this free agency period, improving this roster, what Monty McNair needs to do uh, this offseason to improve on this roster and where the roster is at currently. And one of the things we talked about very briefly there was who we think is going to be the starting two guard. And Brendan and I were both in agreement that it was going to be Dante DiVincenzo. And I've shared with you before, the Kings went after Dante DiVincenzo two separate times. They had a DiVincenzo deal that fell apart because of a Bogdan Bogdanovich sign and trade scenario. There was tampering investigations ended up costing the Milwaukee Bucks a, a draft pick. That was a couple of off seasons ago, Monty McNair's first off season. And then the Kings actually acquired DiVincenzo uh, at the trade deadline last season in the uh, as part of the Marvin Bagley trade that sent him to the Detroit Pistons. So I thought for sure, like, the Kings were going to be very interested in bringing DiVincenzo back. And I thought it was an absolute foregone conclusion that the Sacramento Kings were going to, at the very least, issue DiVincenzo the qualifying offer, making him a restricted free agent so you could let the market dictate what his value is going to be, let the market set his price point, and then you have the choice to either match or let the guy go. It it puts you in a position of complete power. But here we are on the 29th of June, Tomorrow, free agency begins, and according to James Hamm, who reported this per- first, the Sacramento Kings are not issuing the qualifying offer to Dante DiVincenzo. I don't understand. Like To me, and I put out three, I guess kind of four, but mainly three ways that this makes sense. And the first way is what I'm hoping for at this point. The Kings have a deal in mind or maybe a deal already in place or something on the table that would land them a starting two guard and they need the cap space in order to get that trade done. So they no longer require Dante DiVincenzo, by the way, DiVincenzo's situation right now, uh, the qualifying offer would have been around $7 million or, or, or something like that. But he has a 14, I believe $14 million cap hold, which really restricts what the Sacramento Kings can do in free agency. So by not issuing the qualifying offer, they get rid of that cap hold essentially, at least as far as I understand the situation. Uh, And uh, they don't have to worry about that money kind of locking up their books. So that opens up the possibility for some big salaries in a trade that opens up the possibility for the Kings to go out and spend that money on a day one free agent. What makes the most sense to me in a positive and a reason why this move would be a positive is that there is a trade on the table. The Kings have a starting two guard in mind. Maybe Davion Mitchell 
is that starting two guard or Terrence Davis, two guys that are currently on the roster. And they're looking to go out and use the money that they would have put or had on hold for DiVincenzo to go in and bring another talent. That's one of the ways that this move makes sense in which we're going to find out a lot, or we need to find out a lot in the very near future. The other two ways are not positive. Number two is that Dante DiVincenzo and his camp, which we heard reports and rumors that they were not happy with how the Sacramento Kings handled DiVincenzo's minutes in his rotation after he was traded to the Kings at the end of last season. I understand their point. They felt that the Kings were intentionally not starting DiVincenzo, not playing him as much, so that it would drive down his value uh, during the offseason so that maybe they could bring him back cheaper. And based off of the fact that they were starting Justin Holiday every game except for one in front of DiVincenzo, who was significantly better. And I think the Kings at the time viewed DiVincenzo as more of a long-term piece than Justin Holiday. I understand their point. So if things are really that bad, things are so bad between DiVincenzo and his, his camp, his agent, and the Sacramento Kings, that the Kings are just completely cutting ties, that's a really scary scenario to think about the Kings burning a bridge that bad in such a short period of time. Number three is that maybe DiVincenzo with his injury and with how he played, he just didn't play up to Monty McNair's standards and he was not good enough for Monty to invest the money into. And we know how important cap flexibility is to Monty McNair. I think that's just dumb personally. I think that's just dumb, just like I think it's dumb if the Sacramento Kings and DiVincenzo or DiVincenzo just simply said, I don't want to be here. And Monty McNair and the Kings said, OK, if you don't want to be here, fine. We don't want you here if you don't want to be here. It just seems like extremely poor asset management, like extremely poor. DiVincenzo has value. And at the very least, you issue the qualifying offer. He doesn't accept it. He becomes a restricted free agent. At the very least, you have the final say. You can let the guy walk still, but you have the final say. I don't understand it. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that scenario number one that I put out there, that the Kings are going to now use this roster spot and use this money they've opened up for a trade or for some kind of move that makes sense. I'm hoping that is the outcome to this. Because if not, this to me is a negative mark on Monty McNair's general manager progress report. The biggest negative mark on Monty's progress report to this point is probably him not moving on from Luke Walton last off season and committing to him only to fire him a handful of games into the season. That's probably the biggest negative that McNair has had. A close second in my mind is allowing Bogdan Bogdanovich to walk for nothing. Here you are again allowing a player that has, I don't think, as as much value as Bogdan Bogdanovich did, but still a player that is valuable in the league. Dante DiVincenzo does have value in the NBA. You're potentially letting him walk for nothing. Unless, again, unless you're doing this move with the idea or with a precur- as a precursor to a bigger, significant move that does make your team better. To which... Unfortunately, in that case, DiVincenzo is just kind of the fall guy. This needs to happen in order to open up the space. I really hope that's the case because as of right now, I'm scratching my head. I did not see this coming. Not even a little bit did I see this coming. I thought for sure that Dante DiVincenzo was going to be a Sacramento King next season. You heard me say that a lot over the course of the last few months. And I'm not alone in that. I think every single Kings media personality, Kings reporter, even James, hearing him on ESPN 1320 today, but the guys that I had talked to at Kings practice, we're all perplexed. Like, I don't understand this move, but Monty has a whole off season to improve this roster as of right now with DiVincenzo more than likely leaving in free agency. This roster just got worse, not better. You need this roster to get better. So I don't know. We're going to have to see. And and with free agency beginning tomorrow, hopefully we get an answer sooner rather than later. We cannot afford, or rather the Sacramento Kings cannot afford to simply sit on their hands now, let DiVincenzo go, and twiddle their thumbs and dilly-dally their way into filling that void. Because even if 
they didn't view DiVincenzo as their starting two guard. And I believe he was the favorite to be the starting two guard, even if they're confident with uh, with Davion Mitchell or Terrence Davis or maybe even Justin Holiday in that spot. You still lost, at the very least, a very important rotational player in DiVincenzo. DiVincenzo was going to have a significant role here, whether it was as a starter or coming off the bench. You now have to replace that. And I know you don't have to replace that in day one or two of free agency, but you certainly can't just sit on your hands and twiddle your thumbs at this point. Now, what I do hope is a possible scenario, although I understand arguments against this idea. Also today, the Atlanta Hawks and San Antonio Spurs worked out a a deal bringing DeJounte Murray to Atlanta, a pretty big trade. I don't know what the, the San Antonio Spurs are doing. Maybe they're tanking hard for the very stacked 2023 NBA draft. The Kings better be better than the San Antonio Spurs next year. That's all I'll say. But now that they've made this move, the Hawks have made this move and brought in DeJounte Murray and traded away a bunch of draft capital and Danilo Gallinari in order to make this trade happen. That makes Kevin Herter available, as well as we know John Collins has been made available. It sounds like, based off of the conversations that I had, it sounds like the Kings are the most likely trade partner for Collins. Although... The Hawks wanted to get a trade done, a Collins trade done before draft night. It's now a week almost after draft night and Collins still hasn't been moved. I don't know if that's a representation of a too high asking price from Atlanta, a representation of Collins not having a lot of interest around the league. I do know there's still interest here in Sacramento. So maybe this allowing DiVincenzo to walk is a precursor to a... Kings trade package that brings John Collins and Kevin Herter from Atlanta to Sacramento. Herter could theoretically become your starting two. John Collins would more than likely become your starting four. You move Keegan Murray over to the three. I imagine the package going back to Atlanta would involve Harrison Barnes and future draft capital. Maybe that's not enough for Atlanta. I don't know. But that's one of the ways where if that trade went down, even if I would have questions about that trade, I would say, okay, it makes a little more sense now why they're moving on from DiVincenzo. Because at this point, I'm perplexed. Something like a, a trade like that, a reasoning like that, we need to see tangible evidence of. The can- the Kings cannot roll into next season, roll into training camp with that question unanswered. We need an answer to that question. We absolutely need an answer to that question. Let me know how you're feeling with this. I'm just scratching my head here, to be honest with you. But let me know how you're feeling. You think it's a good move? You think it's a bad move? You just as confused as I am? At Matt George Sack on Twitter. You can email me, Matt George Sports at gmail.com, or leave your thoughts in the YouTube comment section down below. I'm going to let you know what I noticed and what I saw from uh, the Sacramento Kings Summer League practice today. We'll tell you all about that after I tell you about a great sponsor of the Locked on Kings podcast today. I told you about them a little bit at the beginning. Arcade One Up. Boom shakalaka. We have massive news. The one and only NBA Jam arcade game is back. The best arcade game of all time, in my opinion. Uh, And they are making it bigger and better than ever with the wait for it. Shack edition machine and it's one of the first sports games ever to feature real and digitalized NBA licensed teams there are no fouls no free throws and the best part no quarters required you can compete with your friends and family through their all new Wi-Fi leaderboards making you more connected than ever you can pre-order now from arcade1up.com that's arcade the number one up.com for an established early September ship date arcade one up is the place for fun they've got even more classics like the golden T game uh, Mortal Kombat and many others, and these machines are starting at just $399. Check this out. They're giving away an NBA Jam Shack edition to a locked-on listener. Three of them, to be exact, you can enter for a chance to win a game console for your man cave at arcade1up.com slash locked on. That's arcade, the number one, up.com slash locked on. You've got until July 8th to enter. It's coming up quick. Make sure you enter, and you can win an NBA Jam Shack edition console. Don't miss out. Enter today, and let me know if you get it, whether you win or whether you buy it, who are you going to play with? So normally, regular season practice uh, availability and even training camp practice availability doesn't last very long. They bring us in, the media in. We get to stand and shoot kind of the end of practice. Normally, it's less drills and more scrimmages and shoot-arounds and things like that. Less, um, Certainly less strategy, playbooks, things like that. They don't want that getting out there, and rightfully so. And then we speak to whoever's made available. Well, this time... 
We arrived at the King's practice facility connected to the Golden One Center at 2.30 in the afternoon, and practice went all the way until 4.15. We got to watch the entire thing, got to watch all these different drills, got to watch just the energy, the intensity, a lot of fast break, a lot of transition defense, a lot of transition offense. It was really cool to see, and and one of my biggest takeaways from this was not just the, the energy and intensity, but it was... It's cool to see a roster full of young men who are hungry and and ready to prove something. And I'm not saying that King's practices are normally filled with entitlement, right? De'Aaron Fox works hard. DeMontis Sabonis works hard. Harrison Barnes, all these guys who are established NBA players work hard. Of course they do, or they never would have gotten to that part in the first or that where they're at that, that tier in the first place. But to see a bunch of players, many of whom won't make an NBA roster, I'll say most of whom won't make an NBA roster, many who may not ever play in the NBA beyond the summer league. They're fighting for a spot. They're fighting for an opportunity, not just to impress the Sacramento Kings, but to impress the entire league. Remember summer league, you're going to have a bunch of eyes off on you from around the league. Maybe you're fighting for a G league spot somewhere on some G league roster. Maybe you're trying to impress uh, European and international scouts. There are a lot of people, a lot of eyes on NBA summer league to scout talent. And these young men are, are fighting hard to impress enough to hopefully earn a spot and accomplish their NBA dream. And you can see that with how hard they work, how they communicate. These are for the most part, strangers to one another. Maybe they know each other from playing together, going through the college system or whatever, but most of these guys have never been teammates before, so they're trying to learn and figure each other out, as well as this is an NBA practice now, and even at Summer League, NBA Summer League practices are different from college and and high school practices. I actually asked Keegan Murray about that at media availability after practice was over. I asked him, hey, how was your experience in these practices different or if at all, or was it like riding a bike for you? Is it just basketball? And he said, no, this, uh, every, every single tier that you go up from high school to college, the intensity goes up from college to the NBA, the intensity goes up. Uh, so it was fun to watch. Got to see Keegan. Uh, he actually didn't shoot as much as maybe I would have liked him to. They were incorporating him uh, a lot in drills and things like that and having him move the ball. Uh, but it looked to me, and this could just have been the way that drills were were playing out, but it looked like the Kings were getting more looks for Nemias Keita than they were for Keegan Murray. And I'm not suggesting that offensively the Kings aren't trying to prioritize Keegan Murray. It just looked like they were trying to give other guys opportunities. I thought Nemias Keita looked really, really good. For a seven-footer, as big as he is, and to see him in person, he is massive. I like what he could potentially provide the Kings main roster. They need what he can provide, the rebounding, the shot blocking. But compared to last year, Kata looked significantly faster, like his footwork looked better. He was getting up and down the floor really well, able to run in transition uh, with the Kings, which, of course, matters if he's going to make it to the main roster, too. I thought Kata looked great. Got to speak with him afterwards a little bit, too, and he said that the game's slowing down for him and his confidence is up, and it's different this year uh, compared compared to last year in some ways. Uh, so I'm anxious to see what kind of summer league that Kata has. Uh, and then got my first look at, at Keon Ellis. Didn't get to watch him too much. He was part of what we believe is the starting five. Um, so got a, a couple glances at, at Keon Ellis and saw him shoot a little bit. Jump shot looked good. Saw his athleticism and saw his defense. Uh, the defense seemed to be a real priority uh, for the Kings during this uh, this summer league practice. So to see Keon Ellis and get a couple glances, glances at him, I liked what I saw. Looking forward to seeing more in the California Classic and in summer league. So overall, I was just really happy with and, and really impressed uh, with I, what I saw as a whole from Kings Summer League. Also got to speak a little bit with head coach or summer league head coach, Jordy Fernandez, who's actually also the um, associate head coach on Mike Brown's staff. Uh, and, and he seemed very pleased for the most part with practice. He talked about this being day two, the fatigue starts to set in a little bit more as they had long practices, intense practices. There weren't too many breaks. It was just upbeat, go, 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 go. And these guys were able to hang with it. Uh, so I was impressed. I'm looking forward to seeing a number of these guys play, looking forward to see if any diamonds uh, emerge out of the rough, or if you can find a needle in the haystack here, maybe find a couple of players that at the very least you want to add to your G league roster, G league head coach, Bobby Jackson uh, was there. He was in attendance uh, and, and helping run the practice. And uh, Mike Brown and Alvin Gentry were sitting next to each other uh, talking during a lot of the practice as well. I saw Wes Wilcox there, assistant general manager. No sign of Monty McNair, though. He was not there. I imagine he's up in his office working uh, and trying to figure out and prepare for free agency and everything that's going on with that. And then uh, Davion Mitchell 
was there, which he didn't compete from what I saw. He didn't really participate much in practice drills. He was definitely there. He was present talking to some of the guys, talking to a lot of the coaches. And that reminds me kind of what Tyrese Halliburton was with summer league last year. Tyrese Halliburton did not play for the Kings summer league team last year, but he was with summer league roster the entire time practiced with them in Vegas. I believe practiced with them when they were preparing for the California Classic. So maybe Davion Mitchell will have a very similar role there. But I was happy with what I saw. It made me very excited for the California Classic and for Summer League. And I did release a video, uh, a behind-the-scenes look, some of the drills, some of the glimpses inside practice. And you could hear from Keegan Murray, Kata, uh, and from head coach Jordy Fernandez. So you can go and check that out. That's on my Twitter, at Matt George Sack. It also uh, will be available on ABC 10 for you to watch. Uh, so go and check that out. And I'm thinking about releasing some of the other quotes and other sound from the conversations that I had at summer uh, league practice, but we'll have to see if I'm able to get to that with all the chaos uh, that is going on here. Before we wrap up, I have another great sponsor to tell you about. That sponsor uh, is Sakara. You may have heard about Sakara uh, in my last episode of Locked on Kings. This is a relatively new sponsor, but Sakara is fantastic. They help feel your best by starting with what you eat. Sakara helps you live a healthy, balanced lifestyle that you truly enjoy with delicious, plant-rich, transformational, uh, transformational rather nutrition that builds a foundation for living in your best body. Now is the perfect time to seek wellness, joy, and abundance in all areas of your life, starting with what you eat. And with Sakara, you get nutrition or rather nutrient dense meals, snacks, and supplements that nourish your body without ever sacrificing taste or quality. Sakara is a wellness company anchored in food as medicine on a mission to nourish your body through the power of plants. Sakara gives you the tools that you need to transform your life with their organic, ready-to-eat meal delivery program and functional wellness essentials. Their nutritionally designed, chef-created breakfast, lunches, and dinners are made with powerful, plant-rich ingredients, helping you boost your energy, support your digestion, curb your sugar cravings, and get your skin glowing. Plus, it's all delivered right to your door, ready to eat. Right now, Sakara is offering our listeners 20% off of their first order when they go to sakara.com slash lockedon20 or enter code locked on 20 at checkout. That's Sakara, S A K A R A dot com slash locked on 20 to get 20% off your first order. The dramatic Sacramento Kings offseason continues. We'll see if we get any kind of answers on this Dante DiVincenzo decision. We damn well better get some answers through action uh, this offseason. And tomorrow, of course, is the start of free agency. So I'm planning on having, of course, a, a locked on Kings free agency pod for you. We'll see if the Kings, how active they are on day one. Hopefully we get an answer right away for why the Kings made this Dante DiVincenzo move. Of course, like today, we can have random, regular, uh, or rather irregular emergency podcasts. So make sure you're keeping an eye and an ear out for that. Thank you for those of you who have listened to two podcasts in one day. I really appreciate you. Don't normally do that, uh, but sometimes it calls for it here. And whatever happens this offseason, no matter what, we will have it covered for you on Locked on Kings. So make sure you stick with us all offseason long and into next season, of course, once training camp starts, summer league, free agency. We're going to cover it all. And then regular season Kings basketball. Can't wait for that to come around uh, this fall. Appreciate your support. Can't wait to have you join me on the next episode. Until then, my name is Matt George. You have been listening to Locked On Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network.